How you doing? Welcome back to Charlie and me, our camping vlog. A couple of weeks ago, I mentioned at the beginning of a video that somebody had got in touch with me via email um, about doing a video for newbies, for people who have, I'm going to just move this a little bit, people who have possibly just got into the caravanning or camping scene and they have a motorhome or a camper van or a caravan. Because let's face it, caravans, motorhomes and camper vans, everything basically works the same. The electrics, whether you're plugged in, whether you're running on 12 volt, or your gas is pretty much the same and the plumbing is pretty much the same. So somebody had asked me, um, would I do a video for newbies on when you're plugged in, what power can you use uh, without tripping the trip on a campsite? Um, talk to us about inverters, talk to us about solar. Now, I am no expert. Okay, I'm an electrician by trade, but it's been a long time since I practiced being an electrician, but you still tend to remember things. I'm just an enthusiast, and myself and Chris say it on the Camping Crew podcasts all the time. We're just enthusiasts, and we want to help people along the way. So I said, right, we'll make a video, what I call a fill-in video. It's not going to be too long. It's not going to be too short. Uh, Charlie's not with me because I'm out in our storage where I, where I parked the camper van. And I'm just going to go through how we operate, okay? I'll give you a small tour of the van. I've already told you about our TV system. Um, I'll put a link up at the top of the page if you want to go back and look at our Wi-Fi, our TV, the Amazon Fire Stick, the 12 volt power. I ran power in for charging our phones and stuff. So I'll put a link at the top of the screen and you can go back and look at that video at a later date. But I'll just do a quick show you around the camper van and what changes I've made to the camper van since we bought it. We have it now, I think we bought it in 2018, in July 2018, it's a 06 Heimer. So I'll take you through it, I'll show you the setup. Most camper vans look like this, where the gas is stored, where the water is, most of them look like this, okay? So let's take a quick walk through. Uh, I'll show you what changes we've made to the camper van, very few, and then we'll talk gas, electrics, water, and I think that's all that you really need to know, okay? So let's take a pop outside and just take a walk around the camper and I'll show you the changes we've made. Okay, so here we are, excuse a little bit of an echo. I had to uh, close down the shutters because the mechanics next door revving cars and there's drilling and stuff. So if there's a bit of background noise, I'm sorry about that. So as I said, we have a 06 Heimer 655 low profile. The only changes we've made to the van since we've got it is we put solar in and a second leisure battery. We put on an awning, an outside light, and I put a light bar on the front, and then we did some graphics. Um, oh, and then I color coordinated the mirrors, which you would have seen in a video beforehand. So they're the only changes that we made to the van, and I'll just show you the van as it stands now. We put graphics on all our camper vans. That guy goes on it. Uh, there's a caricature of Charlie on it. We put the paws on it. That's the light bar I fitted, which I've only used once or twice. Uh, the cue ball up there, because it's our 11th camper, and that smiley face goes on all the campers as well. They're the mirror covers that I put on, just to color coordinate them. She came with alloy wheels. Uh, that's the awning and the light we put on, and the solar is up top. One solar panel, I think it's 110 watt, and I've got an extra leisure battery, so I have two 110 amp hour batteries. We've got the bike rack that was there, we did the graphics of Charlie and me, and they're all the stickers that we like to put on when we're supporting different clubs and groups. So that's it. Oh, and she came with a tow bar and air ride suspension as well. Basic camper van. Let's talk gas. Our last camper van had a gas tank which you'd go to your petrol station and fill up with. Here, we're running butane, two gas tanks. Again, most camper vans come with two. We have no switch over. We just have the standard regulator. And when that bottle empties, we switch it over to that bottle. Now, I am thinking of having that converted back to a gas tank because I have to be honest, I love the idea of having the gas tank. I got so used to it in our last camper van. So let's make our way into the camper van. Now, we have made very little change inside. As we mentioned earlier, we've put in Wi-Fi and I've put in a 12 volt charging system just here. 
that's really it. Oh, and I added strip lighting, which I switch on up here, just because this area was very dark in around the kitchen area. We have our standard lights there, another one there, another one just here, which is turned on. And then we have two little pin spots down over the headrest on uh, each side of the bed. And then in the bathroom, there's a light in our shower. And then we have these pin spots and there's one outside the door as well. And that is it. Ugh, no other changes. Oh, sorry, one other change. Uh, I fitted a microwave down into a press down there, which only works when we're plugged in on campsite power. Um, oh yeah. So I mentioned that we had a leisure battery and the second leisure battery, for some reason that light is not coming on, is there. And I have our inverter there. I've just keep this lead plugged in here. We only use the inverter for the laptop when we're away. But the second battery is fitted there. The first one is under the seat over there, which is just the standard one. And then all the control units are under the driver's seat. So let's talk gas. We have the two gas bottles. We use our gas. We run the heating on gas if we're wild camping. We cook and we run the fridge on gas if we're wild camping. The heating, oh, and then we heat our water as well. Again, most motorhomes, campervans and caravans have the same heating system. It might just be a different control. I'll show you the way ours works. Now, the Truma system, this is ours. Our last campervan had a different system. We actually had two boxes, one for water and one for, but this one here, you flick it down when you want the heating on, and then this turns to adjust the blow of the heat out through the vents. We have a vent in the shower, the bathroom, one there, one under the bed, one at the door, just there, and one in on the dinette. So, you turn that on and it starts blowing straight away and then this can increase or decrease the fan. Then you have off. Then you've got 40 degrees hot water or 60 degrees hot water. Our hot water tank is in there where this vent is. It's in under there. We take out all our shoes, lift it up. I am going to show you that in a second because a lot of people don't know about the little frost cap that's in there. So hang on till I just tidied it up and I'll show you that. So that's our water he heater system there. And down here, you will see that little red thing. That's a frost plug. So you should drain your system during the winter, but just in case you're out camping during the winter and it freezes, that plug will pop down and drain water out of your system. You'll notice if you switch on your tap in the morning and there's not much water pressure, it's because of that. And then you need to get down and pull up that red knob that's there and you'll feel a click, you'll hear it click. And once you hear that click, everything is okay. So during the frost, that will drop down and drain water out of your tank to help protect your tank. So gas heating, water heater, and I think that's all you need to know about the gas. Okay, let's talk electrics. Again, the same in a caravan, even in a boat, a camper van and a motorhome. You plug into your campsite, you plug into the outside of your vehicle. Now, most campsites in Ireland are 10 amps. A few are 16 and very few are 20 amps. Now, I'm gonna put a picture of a chart here. Actually, I'll show you two charts. This one, I'm not too keen on. I'll put these charts at the end of the video so you can take a snapshot or a screenshot of them. This chart I like because it explains what a toaster or a fire or whatever you're using in your camper van, what amperage it's going to use. So let's say you're on a campsite that's 10 amps and we carry one of these two kilowatt heaters. That runs about eight amps on its own, switched on full power. So you're okay, plug it in and you should be okay on the majority of campsites in Ireland to run that. However, if you decide then, you might, we don't use an electric kettle, but you might plug in the kettle, you're going to trip your 10 amp trip because a kettle at a kilowatt is possibly about three or four amps. Again, check this chart and I leave it, or put it up a still photo of it at the end of the video. 
and you can see that you can't have two things on. Don't even go to nine amps. Just unplug the heater, use your toaster. We only use an electric toaster, the microwave and the heater. So we tend to unplug the heater, turn it off and then go ahead. I think the microwave is only 800 watts and the toaster is only 500 watts. I don't even think it's 500 watts, but just to play it safe, because remember, two of you might be plugged in on the same pole. If the trip doesn't go on the pole, there may not be a trip on the pole. It may be back in a control room on site. If you trip, you might be tripping your neighbors. Also remember if you're on a busy campsite and you're using an adapter plug because you and your buddy plug into the one, you both have to be wary not to use heaters or not use toasters or not use electric kettles together. Again, this is my favorite chart and I'll put a still up for a couple of seconds at the end of the video and you can take a screenshot or a photo shot of it and keep it on your phone. And that way, if you stick to those rules, you're pretty much okay. With the inverter, I've only got a thousand watt inverter. So if we're camping in a field or we're down by a beach and we're not plugged in, I only ever use that for charging the laptop. That's it. Charging phones, perhaps if you want to, but we have the 12 volt charging system there that runs on USB cables. If you're getting an inverter, you want to know what you're going to be inverting. You want to know, do you want to run a toaster? You're not going to run a two kilowatt heater. Even if you get a 3000 watt inverter, you better have battery power to pack that up. What it does is it converts your 12 volt DC power into 240, 220 volt AC power so you can run electrical appliances. Hair dryers seem to be the big things. You want to be looking at a 1500 watt inverter. You better have good solar and you better have at least two batteries if you want to run a hair dryer or an electric kettle. Buy a small gas kettle. And if you want a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, one person mailed us and said, is it possible to use a coffee percolator on an inverter? Grind the coffee before you go and make it with a cup of tea. You're camping, You're supposed to be slumming it, he says with a flat screen TV, DVD and Wi-Fi. Okay, let's talk plumbing. Again, pretty similar. That is a filler from outside where you just fill your water tank. I think, do you know, I don't know what the capacity is that is. I keep saying it's 300 liters. It could be. I must actually find out, but that's our water tank and it's under the dinette passenger. And then of course, as normal, we're running water from our kitchen. We run water from our bathroom and we also use the shower. And in the moment, I carry my silver screens and a blanket belong to Charlie in the shower, but we actually use the shower. Now, this tap is a little micro switch on the top of it and ours broke. And I think it was 80 euro for a new tap. And I went, I'm not paying 80 euro for a tap that works fine. So what I did was I fitted a little switch here, which turns on and off my pump just for the sink. Everything else runs by itself. The shower has its own little micro switch. This tap has its own micro switch. It's just when I want to use the sink, I turn it on and there you go. And then you flick across here for hot water. And again, the hot water is operated by that system. We have a two ring gas burner, which is here. We have the fridge, standard fridge. We've got a gas grill and oven, which we don't use as much. And here's the microwave that I fitted earlier on, which is wired in at the back to our 220 shoreline. I could put that on the inverter if I want to, but we don't use the microwave that much. We really only use it when we're plugged in. And then we have a roof light there. I think that should cover most of what you guys were asking us about. Again, it's pretty basic. We pretty much do the same. And I'll put the two charts, the electrical charts at the end of this video. I think that is about everything covered. We've done the charging. You can look back to find out about our TV and our Wi-Fi. I've got to be honest, that Wi-Fi system is brilliant. I'm using it through a SIM card from Air, which is no limits, but I believe it's restricted to about 80 gig or 80K. I'm not sure what, but it's 80, whatever it is. Uh, during the winter, I think four or five hours uses about seven megabytes or bits. That's Chris's department from the camping crew, all the technical end of things. But yeah, look back on the, I've already put a link up to look back on the Wi-Fi to TV system and the 12 volt system. So we've covered the gas, we've covered the water, 
we've covered the electrics, we've covered the heating, and I'll put those two charts up at the end of this video. Thank you for your inquiry, and I hope that this is not the normal that myself and Charlie do, but I hope that it's going to help some of you who are just new to the scene. Happy camping, stay safe. Can I remind you to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already done so, and if you click on that bell icon, it means every time we upload a video, you'll get notified. And then, of course, you've got Chris and me, the Camping Crew Podcasts. They go out on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. They're available on most good podcast platforms, but you will get them on this one here, which is anchor.fm forward slash the hyphen camping hyphen crew. You'll definitely get it there, but it is available on most podcast platforms. From me, Aaron, thank you for joining us, and I hope that this little video is of some help to you newbies and camp safe and stay warm and just keep an eye on that chart if you're plugged in. Take care. Bye-bye till the next time.